I was training for my first half Ironman, and I started to feel a really dull ache in my right ear. And the second time I went to my ENT, he did a scope, and he said, you don't feel anything when you swallow? I was like, should I? And that's when he told me that. He said, uh, you've got a, a large tumor at the base of your tongue that's exploding. It was certainly quite serious because in that area of the floor of the mouth, you really cannot uh, remove it surgically. We want to give him the most aggressive treatment. So I work with Dr. Pandia, our medical oncologist. And we have been treating uh, a lot of patients with very challenging big tumors in the tongue base using the combination chemotherapy and radiation. With this young age, young family, all of us were very concerned. The day before, I had done the muscle man race, a half Ironman distance. So I'm feeling like I'm in the best shape of my life. It's my birthday and it's this bright blue sky, sunny day, and I'm just standing there in the parking lot at my car. I was like frozen. All these horrible things come rushing at you. And then it hit me, it's like, okay, <laughs> am I done? You know, I mean, it's time, it's time to put a plan in place. What was interesting about Wilmot when I went there was I walked into the cancer center, I sat down, and it was like, whoom, this team of people comes in sits in the room with me. Dr. Chen comes in, Dr. Pandia comes in, social worker, the lead nurse, and I have this, this multidisciplinary team just sitting with me, and the picture was never clearer. I use the term a well-oiled machine, so uh, I really felt they were like that. They, they had that all covered. It gave him the confidence to take, take this cancer on, and, and it allowed me to do what I wanted to do, and try and understand what he's going through, which it was pretty difficult. And in his case, those side effects became, at least they were manifested in a more serious manner than I would have anticipated. And at one point, all I wanted to do was walk down the driveway, walk once around the cul-de-sac, and back into the house. That would be my exercise for the day because that's how weak I was at that point. You know, I was 129 pounds. Um, and it was in the middle of the day, nobody was home. It was in between my radiation treatments. So I walked down to the cul-de-sac, down the driveway. I got halfway around the cul-de-sac. And I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't make it back to my house. So I just sat there. And then I got up. I eventually made my way back to the house and I, and, and I had this like revelation. That was it. That was the worst point of my treatment. From that day forward, I was going to make little tiny increments that were my way back. And I said, since I started doing a triathlon, I feel really balanced. I need to come up with something that represents TRI that I can follow throughout this whole treatment plan. What can the T stand for? And I'm like, tenacity. I'm gonna be tenacious with my, my treatment, my course of action, my doctors. I'm gonna do everything within my sphere of influence to overcome this. What can the R stand for? And I was like, well, I'm gonna be responsive. And I set my mind to it. What can the I stand for? And I thought, interactive. Lou, after he was diagnosed and was starting to be treated, um, became uh, interested in participating in attending our support group and helping others and inspiring them to understand that the side effects were acute and short term and there was a light at the end of the tunnel. In order to keep a normal life, he would go to his son's sports games and I often laughed. He said, Linda, I just did my tube feeding and I hung the bag from the tree. so I." smiled and so he taught us a lot about just trying to be normal, get exercise, and be involved. It was six, seven months after his treatment, I was in a, a fundraising event called the Megan's Run and I ran into Lou unexpectedly. He was there for fundraising for lung cancer. 
I started to get to know this person unexpectedly outside of the clinic situation and he's a wonderful person with a very, very big heart despite of his own problem and he just always wants to reach out and help other people. And then, you know, a year later in September, I didn't tell anybody, but I said I was going to run the half marathon. I ran the whole marathon. And from that point, I decided what better way to celebrate a two-year anniversary than to do a whole Ironman. And for me, when Lou said, Dave, would you run the Ironman with me? For me, it was, it was a no-brainer. And this is just an experience I don't think I can ever, ever forget. They have this huge Iron Man finish line that goes over there and you hear the announcer announcing the people in front of you. You know, John Smith, you are an Iron Man. And you're just absolutely exhausted. All of a sudden you start to run harder because no matter how tired you are, there's just this energy that builds up. You hear him start to say, Lou Iavoli, you are an Iron Man, and you cross that line and you're standing there and I had my Wilmot Cancer Center jersey on and I just thought, there's no other reason I'm here other than what they did for me. The folks at Wilmot gave me this incredible gift. It was the finish line at the Iron Man. I got a smile on my face because after completing the Iron Man, we decided to go down into the Grand Canyon. And the whole time, Lou was just absolutely in love with life. I have pictures of, <laughs> of him kissing his biceps, just, I am so in love with life. And he's just kissing his biceps, and it's, it's, it's funny, but it really, what, it, what, we're, what he's trying to say is he just is just appreciative of the fact that he has life. Going through treatment is hard. It's going to hurt mentally, physically, but it's something you have to do. So the question is, how do we do it to the best of your ability? And I think anybody that is dealing with any kind of hardship in their life can benefit from a person like Lou. That's why he deserves this award. Just trying to preach positive mental attitude, and that, that's Lou.